Well, guys, this Brinks has been living in my naughty bucket for quite some time. It is a five a series 527, and it's a challenge lock pinned up by Alex Dube, and he did he did send me a key, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. And he told me in the email or in the ma in the note that it didn't work, and no idea why. But uh, we don't need no stinking key. Let's try to get into this just with some picks. And I got this thing set up. Let's get that in just like that. All right, it's pretty quiet right now. We've had some kind of exercise going on here all day with planes flying over really low. So don't be upset. I'm, I'm trying to get in between the lull. All right, I'm going to try to go in. It's a nice wide keyway. It's a Schlage keyway, and I believe I can go in with a gem or a medium hook, 15 thousandths, and it'll slip slip by the warding. And let's see, I'm going to use the top of the keyway. And it's a 50 thousandths because the Schlage keyway is pretty wide. And oh my god, look at this. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. This thing is really, there's a lot of love in there, I can already tell. All right, I'm thinking some undersized pins at least. Let me get that centered. Just a bit so the focus is better. And that way you can see if there's any feedback. And uh, judging from how this thing's flopping, I think we got some serious spools in there. Let me move that just a bit. There we go. There we go. All right. I know it's a challenge lock, so light tension. And uh, let's just go through and see if we can find something. Okay. I touch pin three. I got a click and a very slight turn on the core. Okay, I'm on pin five, a little bit of feedback. Got a click and a slight turn on the core. Okay, I'm on pin two, a little counter rotation there. Okay, I got good fault setback. And I'm gonna have to turn my pick, my tension wrench is getting loose there. There we go. Alright, I'm working. I got a fault set. Okay, I'm on pin two again, counter rotation. So maybe I didn't get him set him all the way the first time. Get up there. That was me falling off the warding, I think. Check pin one. Tension wrench, I knocked him loose. Got a good fault set going. Okay, good. That was pin two. I'm on pin one, counter rotation. Okay, I got a nice deep. That key is turned about half as much as it needs to be to get it open. That's how deep the false set is. That was a warning. Wow! I don't think that guy made the runway. We have two major airports around here, and that. It's not a normal sound. That sounded like it's over near the hospital somewhere. All right, I'm on six. A little counter rotation there, a little feedback. That did not sound good. All right, that was four. I got to click and then even, if it's possible, an even deeper fault set. I got to click on three. I'm thinking T pin. Okay, no, no, maybe not. That's two. Counter rotation. Deep counter rotation. Okay, he's acting spooly. Got the fault set back. The good thing about crashing your aircraft over near the hospital is that your ambulance ride is not going to be very long, I guess. Maybe that's why I did it. 
five. Very deep fault set now. I mean, I thought it was an open. It's turned half as far as it needs to go. All right, I'm thinking we now have a T-pin situation somewhere in here. Or a spool with a very narrow waist. I'm on six. And there we go. All right, oh man. There we go. Let's see what, what Alex has put inside of this thing. I need a Phillips. I just happen to have one. What a civilized screw to put in there, a Phillips, rather than some kind of weird 13.2864 millimeter that nobody has a wrench for. And there is, okay, we do have an anti. We can see it down in there, an anti-bypass wafer. That's a good thing. But we weren't trying to bypass them. Let's see what we got in here. Regular core, six pinner. It's got the half moon. Uh, I do not have a key for this one. So I'm going to do my best to not screw that up. All right, um, get him out of here. Let's go ahead and pull that C-clip off. Get a pinning board. And I use the brass half moon, and this should work. Those pins are going to come right out the top there, hopefully. Wow, it's really tough to push through there. Wow, that was really tight. Okay, I'm seeing some ugliness here already. Look at that number six. He's wide. He's been... Let me unzoom this so the focus will work. That number six is really wallowed out. Looks like an attempt at counter milling. I'm not really sure, but he's really wallowed out. I mean, worn out, or what? the hole has been widened significantly. Serrated, serrated, serrated. Why am I not surprised? Serrated. Um, looks like a. Nope, no, he's serrated. Let's see what this last one. He's really. That is an ugly, ugly hole there. And looks like he's half eaten into pin number five's chamber. And nothing bad on the bottom, but it was just a normal serrated key pin inside of there, but he was definitely flopping around back there. Okay, let's see what we got in the Bible. There's got to be some nastiness in here, too. It couldn't just be that single walled out hole. And, oh boy, look at this. There's barely any spring tension on that guy. And it is a serrated spool. Pin two. Another serrated spool. Three. Normal serrated. Pin four. Serrated spool. Number five. Just barely had tension enough, spring tension enough to push him out of there. There's another serrated spool. And the last one. Another serrated spool. All right. Cool. Let's take a look at the Bible and drop these springs real quick. Um, I only see three springs. There's got to be more than that, right? There's one. We got four. There's a couple of them look like they're caught up in there in the, in the threading. Um, when we look at the top of this, we should be able to tell. So it looks like all six chambers are threaded. And when you look in there, you can see that spring is caught up in number... Well, from this end, it's number three. It's actually position number four. But you can see that all of those are threaded, which explains the problem I was having with these serrated spools. I mean, we felt all of it. The only thing I don't see in there are uh, any T-pins. But I think because 
Number six was so wallowed out. He was probably acting a lot like a T-pin. If you look down inside of there, I don't know if you can see it through the camera. I'll try to get the light down there. You notice in the bottom of that, there's a little bit of damage to the bottom of that keyway of the warding. So that pin would have fallen down just a little bit further than normal. Could have given some problems uh, on picking. But other than that, this is a great effort. You saw how long it took to pick it. Anyway, there's what we're looking at. Um, Everything is serrated basically. So we got ser serrated, all the bottom pins are serrated, and then the tops we had, let's see, five serrated spool pins, and then one normal serrated. All of the chambers in the Bible were threaded, and also all of the chambers inside of the, the uh, core were threaded, except number six. He was just straight up mangled and violated by, I don't know, some kind of pocket knife probably. But anyway. It was a tough lock to get into. Alex, you did it for your first shot. You did a great job. This kept me out a long time, and I think uh, I think Brinks can probably take a few lessons from you to toughen up the inner core of this. Uh, the outer is already pretty tough. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.